not realize the reason why we call it the law of the land is because it's differentiating between the law of the sea. There's a second law. So that's why when you walk into a court, when you walk into a court, you will see a fence with a gate. And the people sitting out here, you call the law of the land because the people live on the land. But once you are walk through those gates, when your name is called and you walk through the gates, those gates are referred to in court as a water gate. A water gate is when you go through the canal, like the Panama Canal, they have water gates. And when the water gate opens, the water rises so that they close the gate and the next gate opens and it rises again. And so when you go into a court, your name is called and if you put your hand on the gate, there's a piece of wood on the top of the gate. So when your name is called, you put your hand on the gate and you open the gate. The gate is a water gate and there's a piece of wood on the top of the gate, it's called a bar, the B-A-R, and you're not licensed to pass the bar. The attorney is licensed to pass the bar, not you. So therefore, when you walk past the gate, the bar, you are now in hot water and someone's going to have to bail you out. And so that's why all commerce and all life has to do with maritime admiralty or the law of water. And as I said, there are two kinds of law, the law of the land and the law of the sea. When we talk about the sea, the oceans, we always refer to the oceans, and one of the ancient words for the ocean or for the sea was mer, M-E-R, which gives us our word mermaid. And so the sea or mer was always enchanting because the waves come in, they go out, they come in and go out, and it's hypnotic. And so the waves coming in and going out, it's beautiful, it's relaxing, it's metaphysical, and so it's very what we call enchanting. And so the law of the sea became known as the law of the merchant. And so the law of the merchant or merchant is the law of the sea or the law of water and water and law, water represents money. It is the liquid asset, the cash flow. And once you understand that all activity of humans on the earth, crime, it doesn't matter what kind of activity, whatever the activity you're involved in is under the law of the sea. It's under maritime admiralty law. And you need to understand what the word maritime law means. It means the law of the sea. Let me give you an example about how the law of the sea works. All ships, rocket ship, sailing ship, item has to have its own certificate of manifest. You have to have how much the car weigh, what color was it, does it have air conditioning, is it four door, two door? So it has to have its own certificate of manifest. Why? Because it came in on a ship and she delivered the product on the water, on the high seas. So this is why when you were born, your mother's water broke and you came out as a maritime admiralty product because you came out of water. Therefore, you have to have a birth certificate, a certificate of manifest from the ship who sits in the harbor in her birth. So you have to have a birth certificate. Why and who has jurisdiction over the birth certificate is the dock, because that's where the ship is sitting. It's sitting at the dock. So the dock has to sign your birth certificate. Why? Because you are a maritime admiralty product. The banks will buy your body. It's a story of the way banks work, the way maritime admiralty commerce works, you need to understand that you are a product. This is why if you are looking for a job, you're not looking for employment, you go to a human resource center because you are nothing more than a resource. You are a human resource, just like iron and copper and oil and silver and you, you're a resource. When you drive through downtown Los Angeles, you will see gang graffiti on the walls. Most people driving by and seeing gang graffiti just shake their head because it's just incredible the uh, way that young people destroy property by spray painting graffiti on walls. 
But young people who understand that graffiti as a symbol, it means something. And if you don't understand the symbolism, you need to stay out of that neighborhood. So the same thing is happening all around the world. If you understand the flags and the symbols on flags or the coats of arms or the heraldry or the corporate logos that companies and corporations use, these are all symbols and words and terms that are being used. A lesson until you understand that the whole world is a business. The entire earth is a business. Now the only way that people are going to learn anything is by fellow communication people communicating with other people, learning from other people, and passing that knowledge on. That's the way the human race educates itself. That's the way we have grown. That's why people like myself are referred to as researchers. The word is re, R-E, researchers. Why? It's because I'm not doing anything new. Myself and others like me who are referred to as writers, authors, and researchers are merely researching meaning other people have done the searching, other people have dug out the facts and many, many, many centuries ago, maybe many thousands of years ago. And so this is what happens in a court. If you're going to uh, make a decision in a court, you have to do some research. Go back into the records and see what the courts before you have said. See what the judges have said you know, 30 years ago about this particular subject. So what you're doing is you're researching do it again. And so today the way young people need to understand is that there's knowledge out there that you haven't been given and you need to research that knowledge. And the way it's done is very simply, you don't confront authority. Just go to the library, especially today with the technology that exists on the web. All you have to do is go on the web and start researching words and terms and symbols and how government works. Where do religions come from? Where do the religious ideas that we spouse and the things that we talk about in Christianity and Judaism and Islam, where do these ideas even come from? How did these great religious movements get started? And where does the money come from? You know, it's very interesting when you start looking at the uh, oil companies. For many, many, many years, oil companies have been financing churches, Protestant and Catholic churches, especially Protestant churches, have been getting a lot of money from oil corporations for their missionary movements. A lot of the big churches have huge missionary movements financed by the oil companies. There was a large book, a very thick book, written many years ago that you might be able to find in the library called Thy Will Be Done. 